Prash Dinsanvi and welcome to the full in-depth review of the LG K10 and if you guys missed the unboxing this is these are the products which were inside the box and this is the retail packaging if you guys missed it the link is in the description below as well as in the annotations so do make sure you watch the unboxing as well and let's get into the review let's start off by taking off the back cover something nice about this phone is that it has a removable and replaceable back cover and it has a replaceable and removable battery as well now that we've opened it it is a dual sim phone as well as it has a dedicated memory card slot which is missing in almost every phone which has a dual sim you can either place the sim or the memory card in most of the phones but this is a really interesting feature so let's power up the phone and then talk about the specifications and the review as well the power button is actually at the back of the phone which is also a fingerprint sensor let's power it on and take it forward Okay guys, now that the phone is on, let's talk about the design choices and the hardware itself. If we look at the side of the phone, it's quite a thin phone. It's just 7.9 mm, which is really impressive. And on the top of the phone, we have a microphone for noise cancellation. At the bottom, we have a 3.5 mm jack, a mic, and the USB charging port. On the other side of the phone, we only have a volume rocker and I'm really impressed with the design of the phone itself and it's a very minimalistic design with not much on the phone itself. On the back, we have a fingerprint sensor, a 13 megapixel shooter and a LED flash. And on the front of the phone, we have the speaker grill, the LG branding and the front camera which is 5 megapixel now to look at the device itself to look at the specifications the device is powered by a snapdragon octa-core processor it has 2 gb of ram the display is 5.3 inches which i feel is a very comfortable display the size is pretty decent and does fit your hand really well but what I am not happy about the screen is that it is only a HD display, a 720p IPS display and it should at least have had a 1080p display. It is also powered by a Adreno 306 GPU and it has, like I've already mentioned, it has a dual SIM card slot and a standalone SD card slot. Now the initial review piece had a battery of about 2300 milliampere hours but i'm really happy to tell you that now this device carries a 2800 milliampere hours battery which is impressive and to look at the device from the earlier model from the review unit that was launched by lg this comes right out of the box with android 7.0 and yeah, so that's that's a very good choice that has been made by LG. They have updated the phone itself. I will show you that it comes with Android 7.0 right out of the box. All right, so it's it's a quite an updated device. The experience of using the device is quite snappy actually. You can multitask with various things, but I'm not sure how this device would handle gaming. Also, one thing that I personally did not like about the device was the material choices used by LG. Now, it's obvi it obviously becomes a comparison between similarly priced devices because this particular model was supposed to retail for about 15,000 Indian rupees, but is being sold in the market for about 10,500. In the same budget, you can get much better premium looking devices in terms of just looks there are many devices in the market that look better and compare equally with the specifications that the lg k10 has 
and the initial design of the initial review unit I felt was much better with the power button at the back. You still have the power button but the design elements were a little different and so was the back cover. But as I've mentioned, the back cover is replaceable so you can pretty much toss this one out and get a better looking back cover. It, the phone itself does feel pretty comfortable in your hand, especially for people that have small hands and cannot really manage phablets. This is a very good phone. And although I have mentioned that the screen is only 720p, it does look quite nice for a 720p screen. And although you would not be able to watch full HD videos on this, however, it does feel pretty nice and comfortable also it this phone carries the custom firmware of LG and as you can see there are a lot of modifications on top of the standard Android that you get something else that you might have already noticed is that this phone only has on-screen buttons quite a lot of people prefer this however with me especially I prefer on, uh, I do not prefer on-screen buttons, I prefer the physical buttons at the bottom bezel of the screen and there's quite a lot of bezel used here so they could have placed the buttons here as well and given you a choice of using on-screen buttons or the physical buttons at the bottom. So now let's look at the camera application. It's a pretty standard camera application that you find in most of the LG phones it has a 13 megapixel rare snapper and if you click on the video mode it will directly just start recording video and not give you a lot of options and to select and change options you have to change the options from the settings here and as you can see the video resolution is full HD you cannot record 4k videos with this phone so if you want to do that I suggest going in for a different phone and you get a lot of inbuilt filters in the phone as well and the front camera is pretty decent I will be posting a couple of samples of the camera and the video as well so let's look at a few shots of the camera alright guys as you can see there are a few sample pictures on your screen right now and you must be able to figure it out by now that the camera quality is not really that great but at a phone priced at just about 10,500 you really can't expect much also um, next is I've played a video of when I was trying to record the video using the back camera and there were a lot of problems with the focus and it does not use autofocus and every single time you have to tap the area you want to focus so it does not have uh, automatic face detection uh, or even if it does it does not really work that well the low light performance department also does not work that well there are a lot of grainy pictures as you can see but then again uh, there is not much to compare when you're using a mid-ranged phone and Given the size of the phone and the specifications, there are a few other options that you can consider. But this is definitely a phone to look at while you're planning to buy a mid-range device. This is the front camera sample of the LG K10 and I'm pretty satisfied with the quality. The audio that you're listening is through the camera's mic only. Sorry, I mean the phone's mic. And although you can see at the background the image is a little washed out but overall the quality of the front camera is pretty satisfactory let's get on to the back camera as well with ample amount of lighting the back camera is also pretty decent and the focus problem is also not there but in low light conditions the camera does seem to struggle a bit also there is no optical image stabilization so that's a common thing with phones priced at this range however if you're a video file you should go in for something else but it's a pretty decent camera and i was pretty satisfied with the overall quality
this was the review of the LG K10 now to sum up it's a pretty decent phone at the price that it comes at there are a few good points that I like and a few points that I did not like this is being recorded by the LG K10 back camera so the good point is that it comes at a very good price range the performance of the phone is pretty good and it does pack a punch at the price that it is being sold at after using it for a couple of days i did not feel that it lagged at all the picture quality is also decent the camera is a 13 megapixel snapper it observes a minimalistic design which is really great and this is something that I really appreciated about the LG K10. Also something that a lot of phones don't do. It has a replaceable back cover. It has a replaceable battery. It has two SIM card slots. And you can also add a memory card to it along with two different SIM cards. Now on the downside, I felt that the LG K10 lacks in terms of camera when it comes to low light performance. It does not have optical image stabilization as I have mentioned. It's not available in phones of this price range. Now, when we look at the camera, it really struggles in the light, whether you're recording videos or you're taking photos, and focus is a big issue when it comes to low light performance. Also, what I felt was the material choices in the LG K10 could have been a little better because phones of these price range nowadays, thanks to the Chinese competitors, have a lot of better designs and a better feel altogether. But at the same time, you should consider it while buying a phone of the mid-range price. Final thoughts that the LG K10 is definitely a good phone, but should consider the mid-range section, especially for India, in a little better manner. The LG V20 and high-end phones pack a punch and have everything required in a flagship phone. But LG really needs to rethink its strategy, especially for India and especially when they are considering making mid-range smartphones because India is a price sensitive market and there are a lot of competitors now. Alright guys, that's it for the LG K10 review. If you missed the unboxing, the link is in the description below. I hope you liked the video. If you did, do give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel for constant updates and normally I do a lot of magic videos and a lot of reviews so make sure you check out my channel from the links as well as the annotations below and I will see you next time.